Hello, I am here today at the Stanford Graduate School of Business with the incredible Crystal Haling, mm -hmm. the amazing Ashley Clark. Thank you both so much for speaking to my Stanford MBA students today in my individual philanthropy class. Today we were talking about trust-based philanthropy. Ashley, could you start us off by defining what trust-based philanthropy Sure. So for us, that means um, that we want to share power with our grantee partners. Mm -hmm. And it means that we understand that they're the experts in their work and that we want to trust them and give them the funds um, with as few hula hoops and as few uh, as little red tape as possible so that they can really be focused on um, the critical work that they're doing. And then lastly, I'd say that it means um, developing like deep, authentic relationships with our grantee partners that are filled with, you think, care, love, and mutual respect. I love how grounded that approach is in humility, listening, and empathy. Absolutely. Crystal, talk to us about this notion of shared power and how you live that principle in your incredible work at the Libra Foundation. So at the Libra Foundation, we are really trying to create a, mo a more just society. Mm -hmm. We bring a human rights lens and a racial justice lens to the work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, part of that really is about helping to communities to develop enough power to shift the way we define the institutions that are serving us all. So when we think about the criminal justice system, we actually want to make sure that people who are most engaged in that system, people who've been in prison, family members of people who've been in prison are actually the ones who are designing the solutions to how do we build a better and safer society. So for us, that's really about making sure that the power isn't just in the hands of those of us who have resources, who have um, you know, Ivy League educations at wonderful institutions like this, but actually also putting the power in the hands of the people who have the lived experience, because we think they actually are able to define the most salient, most effective solutions. Mm. I love how grounded your work is in Brian Stevens' notion that it should be at the heart of all philanthropy, which is being proximate. Mm -hmm. And I also love um, to quote Darren Walker, how you are totally focused on moving from a place of generosity to a place of justice. Mm -hmm. And I think in today's world, every morning we wake up, we read the newspaper, there are so many atrocities, inequities, inequalities that still plague our nation every day. We see the actions behind those, we see the ramification of those in the newspaper every morning um, as we drink our coffee and eat our breakfast. What do you two feel are the most important challenges that we in the field of philanthropy and that we as individuals, citizens in our country need to be focused on every day? Well, I think we, um, we are having a crisis of our democracy. And so part of what we have to recognize is that civil society can play a really important role in helping people to feel engaged in our everyday lives and, and the work that we're doing. That voting is only one part of being a part of a democracy. And a lot of the organizations that we funded when I first came in in 2017 are a lot of the organizations that are about doing community grassroots organizing work that helped to develop that wave of people that came out in 2018 during the midterm elections, right? So it's not necessarily about electioneering, but it's about actually knocking on doors, asking our neighbors what issues are really up for them, what's the problem that they're grappling with, and then inviting them to come to a community meeting at a school, inviting them to come to a community meeting at a neighbor's house that's addressing the school system, that's addressing clean drinking water, that's addressing jobs in um, the green economy. Those kinds of interactions are the way in which we bring people into having faith again in our democracy. And that's really what we consider power building is. A lot of times people think, I don't know what that is, 
but it really is about that neighbor creation, right? That neighbor knowing that we need to have more of if people are to be engaged in really taking back our democracy from a very, very scary place where we are right now. Beautiful. Ashley, you're a graduate of Spelman and HBS, Yale, U of, or I'm sorry, Crystal, U of Yale, and here at Stanford Business School. What would be one piece of wisdom that you would want to give current students, be they undergrad or graduate students, that you wish you had had in your intellectual, spiritual, philanthropic pockets when you graduated? I would say um, I wish someone had told me to um, slow down and really get to know myself and my passions and kind of filter out all the noise. There's a lot of exciting opportunities um, that one could um, explore that are other people's paths. Right, but I think if um, if folks could actually create the time at a very busy time in their lives during an MBA program to really um, listen to their inner voice and listen to their inner passions and think about um, one of the most um, beautiful and important ways that I can uh, have impact on the world is through how I spend my time every day and to really take the time to consider like what does that look like and it doesn't it might look different for each person but to really think about not delaying that until later, but really starting that today, starting that after graduation, starting that in your next semester, and really thinking about like what, what is meaningful work to you and like starting that work today, because there's so much beauty in finding fulfilling work that it's, it's energizing for you, it's energizing for everyone around you, and it um, just leads to a fulfilling life. Absolutely, beautifully said. Um, I think for me, in addition to, to echoing everything that Ashley said, um, I think that the, uh, one of the great things about going to these prestigious schools is you learn so much and you build these incredible networks. One of the challenges is that you are now ensconced in privilege. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, privilege, as uh, John Powell says, is, um, you know, it's invisible to those who possess it. Uh, so I think one of the things I would really highly recommend for folks who have taken the path of higher education in the ways that we have is to constantly be aware of the importance of humility. Laura, you talk a lot about that. Mm -hmm. um, but also that you have to work hard and actively, you have to do your own internal work mm -hmm. to figure out the ways in which you can open up the aperture for how you see the world. Because the privilege we've got limits. We think that it expands, but it also limits. You know, So we think we we're viewing everything from the assumptions that all of this privilege and power gives us. So you kind of have to work hard to undo that. Um, and that means getting out, as, as uh, Brian Stevenson says, and being proximate to issues. Um, it means listening to people who speak in a way very different than the way you may speak. Um, it really requires of us being very active in our own learning journey of how to dismantle some of that privilege that we have so that we can actually understand issues at a much deeper level. You both are amazing, Grace, in our world, and I thank you both for sharing your wisdom with me it's, and it's my nice. students. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.